Shava, Kohlaila, Yahawa, Bahashim, Yahawasha, Bahashim, or Kakadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahawa, in the name of His Son, and our Lord and Savior, Yahawasha. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honors and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson entitled, The Viper's Tongue shall slay him. So Yahawashai can be friend or foe. What is that foe? Enemy. Adversary. So when we're going according with the Most High's word, then that angel of the Lord is a friend unto us. Let's go to Exodus 20. Well, that angel of the Lord... <clears throat> Is Yahweh Shai. We're going to go to Numbers 20 and 16. The book of Numbers, chapter 20, verse 16. Let's go to verse 15. How our fathers went down into Egypt, and we have dwelt in Egypt a long time. And the Egyptians vexed us and our fathers. And we cried unto the Lord. He heard our voice and sent an angel and have brought us forth out of Egypt. And behold, we are in Kadesh, a city in the uttermost of thy border. So that is when he was our friend. When we walk according to the Most High's ways. Let's go to Isaiah 63. So that viper also can become an adversary. What does serpent mean? Adversary or human adversary. Human adversary. Let's get it. Isaiah chapter 63, verse 8. For he said, surely they are my people. Children that will not lie. So he was their savior. And all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bare them and carried them all the days of old. So that angel of his presence is the son of the most high. Yahweh But watch this. Isaiah 63, verse 9. In all their affliction, he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them, and he bare them and carried them all the days of old. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy and he fought against them. So that angel of the Lord can be friend or foe. And we know the angel of the Lord is Shai. So another word for serpent is human adversary. Let's go to Exodus 23. <clears throat> Verse 20, a book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 20. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, obey his voice, provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. What name? Yahweh is in Yahweh Shai. 
So he is the word made flesh, pursuant to John 1 and 14. So the name also carries a doctrine. But the key is that Shai can be a human adversary, foe or friend. Let's go to Numbers 21. So he can be a serpent. <clears throat> the book of Numbers chapter 21. Well, let's not go there first. Let's go to John 3.14. So he can be a serpent. What does that represent? Wisdom and knowledge. Let's go to John. And this is Shai speaking. Red letter. The book of John chapter 3. Verse 14, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. See that? So Yahushai can be a friend or an adversary. So that word serpent can mean human adversary or wisdom. Let's get it. Let's go into this word serpent. <clears throat> comes from the Greek. Strong's G, 3789, Office. Office. With the ancients, the serpent was an emblem of cunning and wisdom. So Yahweh Shai is the embodiment of wisdom. Well, how do we know that? Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon. Seven. Verse one. I myself also am a mortal man, like to all and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth. So oh, this is Yahweh Shai. And in my mother's womb was fashioned to the to be uh, verse two. And in my mother's womb was fashioned to be in the time of ten months, being compacted in blood of the seed of man, and the pleasure that came with sleep. So he was made through sperm from Joseph. Let's show you he's wisdom. Let's go to verse 22. For wisdom, which is the worker of all things, taught me. For in her is an understanding spirit, holy, one holy, manifold, subtle, lively, clear, undefiled, plain, not subject to hurt. Loving the thing that is good, quick, which cannot be let it ready to do good. So this is Yahweh Shai. Born by the seed of man. Let's go back to John 3 and 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. So we're going to show you that. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 25. For she is the breath of the power of the Most High and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, can no defiled thing fall into her. So Yahweh Shai gives us the comforter a nurturing spirit that causes us to grow in this truth. So he is also a comforter. He can take on friend or adversary. So John 3 and 14 says what? Even as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. So Shai can take on an adversary. Let's go to Numbers 21, verse 5. 
and the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For well, there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul loatheth for the light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten when he looketh upon it shall live. So Yahweh Shai was crucified, died for Israel. So he's being lifted up. He was hung on a tree, okay, of crucifixion. So he is that son of man or serpent that must be lifted up. Let's go to verse 9. <clears throat> Numbers 21, verse 9. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Let's go back to John 3 and 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So we're going to show you that that viper's tongue that's going to slay the wicked is Yahweh Shai. Now at first, Israel became a victim and was slain and brought down, subdued, and bitten by many serpents. Now this literally happened, but it also represents the adversaries of Israel being raised up against us. That's why we read in Isaiah 63, verse 9, verse 10. But they rebel and vex his Holy Spirit. Therefore was he turned to be their enemy, and he fought against them. So he can take on an adversary, or the serpent me, enemy, or human adversary. So let's go further into that. So now this is going to be turned against the wicked. Who are the wicked? According to Malachi 1 and 4, the Edomites. And Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. And we got a lot of two-third beta male simps following the wicked. Let's keep it moving. So the viper's tongue is going to slay the wicked. Let's go to Job 20, verse 14. Yea, his meat in his bowels is turned. It is the gall of ass. Within him, he has swallowed down riches, and he shall vomit them up again. The Most High shall cast them out of his belly. Who is that talking about? Look at the pictures. The international bankers, the Edomites, the global elites. That's who it's talking about. The wicked. So the viper's tongue is slaying him, which starts with this word. Let's keep going. <clears throat> the book of Job, chapter 20, verse 15. He has swallowed down riches, 
and he shall vomit them up again. The Most High shall cast them out of his belly. He shall suck the poison of ass. The viper's tongue shall slay him. The what? The viper's tongue shall slay him. So that starts with the word. It's describing Yahweh Shai. Let's read it again. The book of Job, chapter 20, verse 15. Back to verse 16. He shall suck the poison of asp. The viper's tongue shall slay him. Let's go into this viper's tongue. Tongue comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H, 3956. Lashon. 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 Tongue. Tongue of animals. Tongue of men. Tongue of fire. What? Tongue of fire. So that's describing Yahweh Shai. Let's go to Job 23 and 29. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? So that viper's tongue is a tongue of fire, the son of man. He can be an adversary or a foe. He's going to be a foe to the elect of Israel. Excuse me. He's going to be a friend to the elect of Israel and a foe or adversary to the enemies of the elect of Israel. <coughs> Let's read it again. The book of Job, chapter 23, verse 29. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Let's go back to that definition. Viper's tongue. Tongue of men. Language. Tongue of fire. And in fact, let's go to Jeremiah 5 and 14. Well, this is describing Yahweh Shai, the firstborn of death. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 14. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make thy words in thy mouth fire, and this people wood, and it shall devour them. So Yahweh Shai is our weapon. The word made flesh. He is our sword. He is our shield and buckler. We don't need carnal weapons. Let's read it again. Book of Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 14. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and this people would, and it shall devour them. Let's go back to Job 20, verse 16. He shall suck the poison of ass, the viper's tongue shall slay him. So it's all about the word. Let's go to 2nd chapter 13, verse 10. We're going to go to verse 9. Book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 10. Excuse me. Book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 13, verse 9. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he ne neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire and out of his lips a flaming breath and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. So this is Yahweh Shai, the word of the Most High. 
So he is a sword, a weapon, a breathing dragon on the right hand side. Let's read it again. Second Edges 13 verse 9. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand nor held sword nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out his mouth as it had been a blast of fire and out of his lips a flaming breath and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. So Yahweh Shai is coming back with the chariots of fire. So the word made flesh is also a weapon. So he's going to be an enemy to our enemies. Let's go back to Jeremiah 23, verse 29. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like as a hammer, that breaketh the rock in pieces. So the walls of Babylon, that rock, is being spiritually dismantled right now, consumed by the words of the mouth of the Most High, Yahweh. Who is that? The word made flesh, Yahweh Shai. But there's also going to be a physical destruction when he comes back with the chariots of fire. Let's go to 2nd Edges 13 and 27. But, so these are the United Nations gathered against the chariots of the Lord with Yahweh Shai leading the charge. Second Edges 13, verse 27. And whereas thou sawest that out of his mouth there came as a blast of wind and fire and storm. So the slain of the Lord shall be many in that day. See that? Let's read it again. <clears throat> Second Edges 13, verse 27. And whereas thou sawest that out of his mouth there came as a blast of wind and fire and storm, and that he held neither sword nor any instrument of war, but that the rushing in of him destroyed the whole multitude that came to subdue him. This is the interpretation. So Yahweh Shai can also be a foe, a flame breathing dragon or serpent. Matter of fact, let's go to Isaiah 11 and 4. Book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 3. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord and he shall not judge after the sight of eyes verse 3 again <clears throat> and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes neither reprove after the hearing of his ears so Yahweh Shai is being established as a righteous judge with wisdom, knowledge, all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Let's get it. Remember we read that serpent in John 3 and 14? Well, it's right here. Isaiah 11, verse 2. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and and of the fear of the Lord. Let's go back to John 3 and 14. Remember, we looked this up. That serpent represents wisdom, knowledge, and cunning. See that? The emblem of cunning and wisdom. So it says, John 3 and 14, 
And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So he is the embodiment of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Let's go back to Isaiah 11, verse 2. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So he's also going to destroy the Edomites followed by the other nations. How is he doing that? By the breath of his mouth. The word. But that's also going to be fire. Remember we read his word is also fire. Let's go to Isaiah 11 verse 2. Verse 4. The book of Isaiah chapter 11 verse 4. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity of the meek of the earth and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. So the wicked are being spiritually destroyed right now by this word which is likened unto pure fire. We read that already. So the wicked is being consumed by the words of pure truth. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's go to verse 8. The book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So this word is a consuming fire. So it's also going to culminate in the chariots of fire, destroying Edom. Let's go to Isaiah 66. The book of Isaiah chapter 66. Let's go to verse... 15, book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. So the wicked are being spiritually consumed right now by this word which likened as to a fire. We read that already. Let's go back to 2nd Nebuchadnezzar 13 and 10. But only I saw that he sent out his mouth as it had been a blast of fire and out of his lips a flaming breath and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. So that viper's tongue is Jehovah Let's go back to Isaiah 11 verse 4. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Let's go back to Job 20 and 16. He shall suck the poison of ass, the viper's tongue shall slay him. So this man is being attacked both spiritually, mentally, and physically. He's being consumed by the word, the word of fire. Let's go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. 
So this is going to culminate or end with a major catastrophe for the wicked. Esau, Edom. Right now, this man is being spiritually consumed by the word. Let's go to Proverbs 18 and 14. The book of Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. This devil is wounded spiritually, being consumed by words of pure truth, likened as unto a fire. The hell did I just do? Okay, so let's keep it moving. Let's keep going. Now I lost my place. So Yahweh Shai can be a friend or foe. I think we covered the point here. I'm going to show you. Let's go to Lamentations 2, verse 3. He have cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel. He have drawn back his right hand from before the enemy, and he burned against Jacob like a flaming fire, which devoured round about. He have bent his bow like an enemy. He stood with his right hand as an adversary and slew all that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion. He poured out his fury like fire. So he became a foe, an enemy to Israel. So this serpent can be on your, he can be an ally or he's going to become our adversary when we go off. But he's also going to be an adversary unto the wicked. Let's close out with this one. Ecclesiastes 10, verse 8. He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it, and whosoever breaketh a hedge, a serpent shall bite him. Now, was this talking about an actual, actual serpent? It's talking about an adversary, the viper that's going to slay the wicked. Let's read it again. <clears throat> the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 8. He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it, and whosoever breaketh a hedge, a serpent shall bite him. So this man is being slayed by Yahweh Shai, and eventually by physical fire by concentrated high energy laser beam fire from the chariots of the Lord. That's the mouth of Yahweh Shai. His word is a fire. It's also what? A sword and, and hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Let's get one more. Let's go to Hebrews 4, verse 12. That's why King David said what? He is my sword. He is my defense. He is my shield and buckler. Let's go to Hebrews 4, verse 12. A book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So this, this word is the in all be all. What do I mean? This word is the in all be all. And he's going to finish it. Matter of fact, yeah, let's go here first. Romans, not not Romans. 
Revelations 1, verse 8. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. So he is the beginning and the end, the firstborn of death. So he started it and he's going to finish it. Let's go to Job 18 and 13. The book of Job, chapter 18, verse 13. It shall devour the strength of his skin, even the firstborn of death shall devour his strength. When we go here to Job 20 and 16, he shall suck the poison of ass. The viper's tongue shall slay him. So who is this firstborn of death? Let's go back to Job 18, verse 13. It shall devour the strength of his skin. Even the firstborn of death shall devour his strength. Let's go to Colossians 1 and 18. Who is the firstborn of death? The book of Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. Who is this talking about? Well, let's go up to verse 7. Colossians 1. Let's go to verse 4. The book of Colossians chapter 1, verse 3. We give thanks to the Most High and the Father, of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, and of the love which ye have to all the saints. So it's talking about Yahweh Shai. Verse 13. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Verse 18, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence when well, that firstborn of death that we read in Job 18 and 13 and then Job 20 and 16 is talking about Yahweh Shai. So the viper's tongue shall slay the wicked, the Edomites. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai. A Hashem or Kakadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala and Abad Babao. We got next, Lord willing. Barakatham. Shalom.